Two, chapter 5-5, Theorems About Roots and Equations. Um, the first thing we should talk about is how, you know, when I, when I say roots, that means um, really it's where the graph, the curve, crosses the x-axis, which means it's a, we also call it a couple other things. Um, roots uh, is the same thing as x-intercepts, is the same thing as zeros. So if I ask for one of those things, they're all, you'll see the questions phrased in any one of those three uh, ways and they're all asking for the same thing okay um, so x-intercepts is the same as roots is the same as zeros um, now when I'm doing this this is the main idea here with the um, finding the roots if they give you a big equation um, what you're gonna do is factor the constant term which is the regular number and that'll be the numerator and the factor of the leading coefficient will be the denominator um, so that's why that's a fraction bar in the middle there, um, right here. All right, so um, the, the easiest way for me to do this is really to show you an example. So here's, here's what I mean. So if I gave you this and said, what are the rational roots? Rational, remember, that would be like, you know, you, you, anything that can be written as a fraction. Um, rational numbers versus irrational numbers. All right, so square root of 2 is not a rational number, but... <clears throat> Um, one third is. All right, so um, the leading coefficient is two, all right, and the constant term is five. So that means the factors of five are going to be make up my numerator, and the factors of um, two are going to make up my denominator. And then it's any combination of those two things. So you can see, I, and, it, and it's the plus or the minus have to be taken into consideration also. Um, so if I take five first, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> so the factors of 5, if I go, I'm going to put plus or minus because all of these are going to turn out to be positive or negative. So I got two of them, right? Um, over here I've got my, the denominator, so it could be over 2 or it could be over 1. 5 over 1 is 5, you could write it as that, okay? So there's two, actually four roots, right? Because they're both plus or minus, which means it could be 5 halves, negative 5 halves. And then I've got the 1 over here, so that's going to be, I'm going to have two of those also. These are also plus or minus. And then I'm going to put it over 2, and I'm going to put them over 1. And... That should be all of them. So if you wanted to like list every single one of them out, you could go, you know, five halves, negative five halves, five, negative five, one half, negative one half, one, negative one. You know, you might find some repeats in there occasionally. You can cross those off. Anyway, like I'm fine with this up here, writing it like that. If you want to write it on the bottom and list every single one, that's fine. Okay. All right, so you can see that, I mean, that was only with two prime numbers, <clears throat> with two and five, and I still came up with, uh, what's that, eight roots. Um, so there, there can be a lot of numbers, especially if you have something with a lot of factors, you know. If I put, um, you know, 12 on there as the, as the numerator, well, then as the leading coefficient, you're going to get a lot of them. And, and, and you're going to see... Um, it can be time consuming to figure out which ones are actually the roots. These are possible roots. These aren't actually the necessarily all of them true roots, but possibilities. Um, so now that I've said that, uh, let's go to number two. What are the rational roots of? Write this down. What are the rational Roots of 15 
x to the third minus 32x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so uh, possible roots. Um, you know, I got 15 and I got 2, right? And so this could be 2 over 15, um, 2 and 1, this one's 5 and 3, or 15 and 1. Uh, it could also be 2 over 1. You can see there's going to be a lot of these. These are all plus or minus. It could also be 1 over 1, 1 over 15. Uh, 1 over 5, 1 over 3, these are all plus or minus. There's, there's, so anyway, there's a lot here. Um, and when you're going to start doing synthetic division, it's usually what you do to check and see whether it actually is a root or not. Now you could just start by, you know, picking one of these, one of those numbers and start doing division, synthetic division on it. This is one of those things where, <clears throat> it's not the way I'm going to do it. The easiest way to do this is with a graphing calculator. So if you have a graphing calculator, you know, this is one of those times where you're in an advantage. If you don't have one, you're going to start doing synthetic division. Now, there's this wonderful program here that I'm going to use. Uh, it's called Desmos. It's like a graphing calculator. It's free. There's an app you can download on your phone also. It'll work there. You will not be able to use um, your phone on any of my quizzes or tests. So it's great to use it on your homework, but not so good for class. So you need to get... I recommend getting a graphing calculator for this or borrow one or something. Anyway, so if I go punch this, that big 15 X to the third, <clears throat> 15 X to the third minus 32 X squared um, plus three X plus two into the Desmos here. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for where it crosses the x-axis. So it looks like, you know, if this is one, I don't know what that one is, uh, between zero and one, but the one that's between zero and negative one, that looks like negative point two, and this one looks like two. So I've got two possible roots that I can work with. I mean, you, you could try to figure out what that one between zero and one is you know, it, it could very well be a, a third or something, but two and five, two and 15. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use the other one. The, that one looks like negative 0.2 and two. All right, so I'm going back over here. And I'm going to write down, looks like, Negative point two and two. All right. So now that doesn't mean that it is. Um, but remember, if I go like this and I take that, you know, this is x equals two and x equals negative point two, maybe. Uh, and then I go and take that. <clears throat> and I'm dividing over here with synthetic division. Hopefully you remember synthetic division because it's going to play a big role here. So now I take these coefficients here of 15, negative 32, 3, and 2. Make sure that, you know, you've got all the numbers covered. I got the x to the third, x squared, x, and regular number. If not, you got to fill in zeros. If there was no 3x there, if it was just minus 32x squared plus 2, you got to fill in a zero in between those numbers. All right, so back to this where I can now draw a line. Bring down the 15, multiply, and then uh, 2 times 15 is 30, and then you add straight down, and I get negative 2, and then you multiply again. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, then you add straight down again, you get negative 1. 2 times negative 2 is negative 2. Ooh, that's nice, because I get a remainder of 0, which means it is a root. So x equals 2 is good. Okay, 
So that's one of my rational roots. Now, you're not done yet. <clears throat> um, you want to find the other ones. You know, you got to find all of, all of the rational roots here. Um, uh, when, put down when r equals zero, it's a root. And then what I usually do is I use this to find more roots. So I don't necessarily go back to the 15, <clears throat> uh, the original 15, negative 32, 3, and 2. I'll use this one. I'll go 15, negative 2, negative 1 and figure out what the rest are okay now um hopefully you guys you remember this is this is really 15 x squared minus 2 x minus 1 and um it could be equal zero but if i want to factor this now i can just take this on the side and go this is one of the harder ones actually Sometimes it's nice and easier. Um, this one's not bad at all, though. With 15 times negative 1, that's a times c. And then you get negative 15. And I'm looking for the factors of negative 15 that add up to negative 2, which would be negative 5 times 3. And I split the middle. Negative 5x plus 3x. Bring down the minus 1, the 15x squared. Draw a line down the middle. And I pull out a 5 and an x here. Leaves me with 3x minus 1. And over here, 3x minus 1. The, I can always pull out a 1, which means, in parentheses, I got my 5x plus 1. The other parentheses is 3x minus 1. And I'm not done. I need to solve this out. Um, 5x minus 1 equals 0. 3x minus 1 equals 0. And if you quickly add 1 and divide by 5, I get x equals 1 fifth. Over here, add 1, divide by 3, you get 1 third. So here's my three roots. No, I'm not going to forget that two. That's a three. One third, one fifth, and two. And those are my three rational roots, all right? I know that one took a little while. A while to explain it. All right. So anyway, next one. Number three. List all possible roots then find all rational roots and the equation is x to the third plus x squared minus 17x plus 15 Okay, so um, this will be the numerator. The factors of that will be the numerator. And this will be the denominator. Remembering that there's a 1 in front of that x cubed implied, okay. Um, so now I'm going to go, this will be factors of 15 are 15 and 1. 5 and 3. Over here is just 1. So I got um, 15 over 1, plus or minus. Uh, 1 over 1, don't forget the 1. 5 over 1, and 3 over 1. So I got 8 of them again. And once again, I'm fine with that being written like that. I know that's eight things as long as you do. You got to put the plus or minus there. All right, so now I got to find the possible roots here. Um, so 
So, you know, you can start just dividing and see if they work or not. You know, you can take five, uh, divide that out, you know. Um, my coefficients will be 1, 1, negative 17, and 15. And bring down the 1. That's a 5. Add down is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Add down is 13. 13 times 5 is 65. You get a remainder of 80. So that's not a root, so that one wouldn't work. You know, you can start out that way. I still kind of like going to that graphing calculator. Punch that equation in. Um, I got x to the third plus x squared. Oops, minus 17x plus 15. So, you know, here we go again. Once, looks like one and three. You know, those. that's what looks like what I got. Oh, and maybe negative five. One, three, negative five. We'll see. Now, does, just because it looks like it is, doesn't mean it necessarily is. Um, so it looks like 1, 3, negative 5. All right, so let's try 1. I like working with 1s. 1s are nice and easy. So it's x equals 1. If it was x, yeah, all right. And my coefficients are 1, 1, negative 17, 15. Draw a line, bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1, add, multiply, add, multiply, uh, 1 times 2 is 2, negative 15 is equal to negative 15, ooh, that's a good one, you get a remainder of 0, so x equals 1, that's a good one, now remember, don't, don't go back to the original, work with what's left here, take this and use that as the next thing you're dividing into, 1, 2, negative 15, Space, I should move this. And I'm going to divide by the next thing. So we said one looked good. Um, well, this one's actually beautiful because remember, if I started out up here with a, my first one was a uh, x to the third, which means if I subtract one from the exponent, the highest one there will be x squared. This one will be x, and this will be a regular number. That is easy peasy to factor and solve because um, there's nothing in front of the x squared, which means I'm just looking at factors of negative 13 that add up to 2, which will be uh, 5 and 3. And if I make the 3 negative, they add up to 2, so that's x plus 5, x minus 3. So x plus 5 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, you get your answers x equals negative 5, x equals 3 when you add 3 to both sides and subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, so I got all my roots now. The first one was that x equals 1, I don't want to forget that one. There's my three roots, all right? Very good. So that was a good one. Next one. All right, going a little different direction this time. Number four. What is a third degree polynomial y equals p of x? with rational coefficients so that p of x equals 0 has roots negative 4 and 2i.
So this one, they're going the opposite direction. They're giving you the roots and they want to know what the polynomial is. So what I like to do with these is I'm going to write down my three roots over here. Um, that one, anytime that there's a positive 2i root, there's also a negative 2i root. Okay, um, not so with the negative 4, but with the 2i. If they had said one of them was negative 2i, you knew the other one was going to be positive. You can't have one without the other, okay? So now i got to put them in parentheses. So remember that, you know, when I have negative 4 as the root, that's the same as x plus 4, okay? And if I have... 2i, that means it's x minus 2i. Over here will be x plus 2i, okay? Um, and that's what's in my parentheses. And if I multiply those things together and it equals 0, that's actually the polynomial. Now, because they said rational coefficients, it means I have to actually go through the process of mul multiplying those three things together is all, okay? But that's probably the hard part right there, really, is is just conceptualizing, you know, what those roots really mean, okay? Um, so, now I'm going to multiply these together. I'm going to multiply the two, those two together first, okay? Um, I'm going to do it by FOIL. You know, if I go first, x times x is x squared. Outside is 2i times x, which is um, 2 xi inside is negative 2xi and the last are um, minus 4i squared. Okay, now these two here cancel each other out, which means I got x squared minus 4i squared. Now hopefully you remember from earlier that i squared is negative 1. Okay, which means that's really negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. So that's what I get when I multiply those together. And then I've got this extra x plus 4 over here that I need to multiply out also. And now if I multiply those together, x times x squared is x to the third plus 4x plus 4x squared plus 16. And if you combine like terms here... I get x to the third. Actually, I'm not combining like terms. I'm just switching the order. I always put my stuff in, in standard uh, order. So I like the x squared in front of, before the x's and my x's before the 16. And then I'll put equals zero because it's going to be an equation. And there it is. That's the answer. All right. So... <clears throat> do one more of these together and then I'm giving you a you try and we'll call it a day all right so I am on number five what are the x intercepts of x to the third plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 12. All right, so they didn't ask for the possible roots. Um, so I'm going to go straight to my graphing calculator, punch that, punch that in there, and figure out where to start. Um, Okay, x to the third plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 12. Okay, so it looks like negative 6, negative 1, and 2. Negative 6, negative 1, and 2. Negative 6, 1, and all right, so let's see if which if any of these here work. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> is it 
Okay, so let's try negative one. I like doing ones and negative ones. All right, so this is one, five, negative eight, negative 12. Draw a line underneath, bring down the one. Multiply and add, multiply and add. Negative one times four is negative four. Negative 12, positive 12. Ooh, I like it already. So I'm down to remainder of zero right off the bat. Now, once again, um, so I know x equals negative 1 is good, which means this is really 1x squared plus 4x minus 12. And I can just factor this quickly here. <clears throat> you know, what multiplies to negative 12 and adds up to 4? 6 and 2 look good. Make the 2 negative. I get my answers really fast. x plus 6 equals 0. x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. x equals negative 6. There's my three answers. And just like that, I'm moving on to the next one. All right. So they can go pretty quick if you, you know, get good at this. Um, all right. You try. This. I got number 6 on this. I might be off by one. Find all rational roots of two x to the third plus five x squared minus two x minus five equals zero. All right, so you can do that one and bring it to me in class. Have a great night, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. I'm gonna close it out with some more music here. Find it. What all will be.